In August this year, we're going to have a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. There's going to be a total solar eclipse visible from the continental United States. And this talk is to describe what's going to happen then. What are we going to discuss today? First, we're going to look at different types of eclipses. Then see how an eclipse works. Show you how to observe a solar eclipse safely. Tell you what you will likely see. And where and when you are likely to see it. Eclipses come in all shapes and sizes. First of all, there are lunar eclipses. That's when the moon moves into the Earth's shadow. The moon turns very deep, dark red and is quite spectacular. Although these are quite common, you may see two or three of these a year. Then there are solar eclipses of different types. First of all, you get a partial eclipse where the moon doesn't completely cover the sun. You get a total eclipse where the moon obscures the main disk of the sun so you can see the outer atmosphere of the sun, the so-called solar corona. Or you can get an annular eclipse where the moon is not quite big enough to cover the whole of the sun and you get a bright ring of sunlight around uh, the edge of the moon. Those are quite rare. Eclipses are caused by shadows. A lunar eclipse occurs when the moon moves into the shadow of the Earth. The Earth being a much larger object produces a very wide deep cone of shadow so the moon rel relatively regularly moves into it. A solar eclipse is the other way around, when the moon moves between the Earth and the Sun. Now the moon being a smaller object, the shadow barely reaches the surface of the Earth, so it produces a small spot that travels across the surface of the Earth over a period of a few hours. So where is this eclipse going to be visible from? The eclipse starts up in the northwest in Oregon, and then moves diagonally across the country to South Carolina. So we're only a few hundred miles away from the path of totality i.e. where you can see the whole of the sun uh, skewered. In Washington DC we're going to see a partial eclipse of the sun at about a level of 85%. Well what are your chances of seeing the sun uh, eclipsed? Well if you go to the southeast down into South Carolina the chances are not that good. It's only about 30% chance. The further west you go, the better your chance. If you're up in Oregon, for example, there's a 90% chance you're going to have clear skies. Well, what are we going to see? It is one of the rarest astronomical sights. When the moon completely covers the sun, you're going to be able to see the outer atmosphere of the sun, the solar corona. That's a gas at about a million degrees. The surface of the sun, by the way, is only about 6,000 degrees. So this gas is very hot. And the only time you can see it is when the moon moves between the Earth and the Sun, producing a total eclipse of the Sun, or if you send an instrument up into space that creates artificial eclipses. You're also going to be able to see prominences. Those are the red things near the top left-hand corner of the limb. These are vast columns of very cold material suspended in this hot plasma. Uh, and we frankly don't really know how it's maintained up there for all, all the time that it lasts. These things can last for months. It seems somehow incongruous to have something so cold enveloped in something so hot, but it works for some reason. Also, you might be able to see Bailey's beads. Now, just at the beginning of the eclipse, or just at the end of the eclipse, the sunlight will shine through the valleys at the, on the limb of the moon, producing a series of bright uh, dots along the edge of the moon. These are called Bailey's beads or a string of pearls. They're quite beautiful, but it's time to stop looking directly at the sun when you see them. There are a few ways that you can safely observe the sun and lots of ways you can unsafely observe the sun. So let's quickly go over the two different uh, ways. Safely, you can use special glasses like the ones that we're going to provide to you uh, that you can see the sun through. Um, or you can buy some welder's glass number 14. That's a safe level of obscuration to look directly at the sun. You can produce a pinhole camera and we're going to show you how to make one of those later. You can use a tree. A tree that has sunlight uh, dappled through it, uh, projecting uh, shadows onto the ground during an eclipse will actually project 
pictures of the eclipse because they are in fact a pinhole camera. You can project your, the image through a telescope, though this is not a good idea because your telescope uh, optics will get very, very hot from being exposed to the sun. And, or you can use a full disk aperture uh, sun filter, which is much the preferable way of doing it. And that's what I have on my telescope. Never, ever do any of the following. Stare directly at the sun. Now you've probably heard of a very famous scientist called Newton, one of the, probably one of the cleverest people ever to walk the planet, but he nearly blinded himself by staring at the sun. So it shows how really stupid clever people can be. Look directly, you should never look directly at the sun through binoculars or through a telescope. They concentrate the light of the sun and make it many, many times brighter and can actually burn your eye out. So that's a very dangerous thing to do. So don't do it at all. Use the methods that I outlined earlier. Well, what do we have coming up next? Dr. Trina Ferrell is going to give you some information about the NASA resources that will amplify your eclipse experience. Then Dr. Saber will give you uh, some demonstrations of some safe activities for the kids during a total eclipse, including how to make a pinhole camera of your very own. And then we'll all be available to answer questions. And if there's uh, sufficient time, we'll have a, some of the telescopes out and let you look through them if there's something interesting to look at. So thank you very much. I hope you enjoy the eclipse. Safe viewing. By the way, the next eclipse after this is not for another seven years. If you want to wait for a total eclipse of the sun in Washington, D.C., you're going to have to wait for 2,444. Have fun. For now, goodbye.